Welcome back to the Stadium of Light. It's been a defeat for Sunderland here this afternoon. And um, was the damage done in the first half by Swansea? Obviously, that's when the goals were scored. But um, Sunderland played better in the second half. And will Mike Dodds have learned a lot from this game as well, Danny? Uh, well, he, he will have done, yeah. And obviously, it wasn't the afternoon he was hoping for, uh, stepping back in, in charge. Um, but, yeah, I, th I think if you look at the game as a whole, Swansea, I thought, were excellent in the first half, set up well. Um, 2-0 probably flattered us if we're honest we had a couple of half chances at best they had some good opportunities which they didn't take as well as the obviously the two that they did uh, and then obviously you're obviously chasing the game then coming out for setting 45 I said at half time there can we put in a, a performance like the Plymouth game where we come out on the front foot early on and Brighton get an early goal it wasn't to be so you're always chasing the game you could say maybe Swansea took the foot off a little bit in the second half we obviously improved a little bit yeah we, we changed things a bit personnel as well I thought Chris Rigg done well actually when he come on as well um, but yeah diff difficult afternoon disappointing and then as you said there we just said didn't we when your goalkeepers coming up for the last minute of the game to try and get a, you know a diving header against the team who are down the other end of the of the table to, to rescue a point it's not good is it so it's a massive massive blow yeah disappointing afternoon and yeah as you say where do we go from here well I'll tell you where we go we have to get ready to go again yeah we have games to get to ready to go to Carroll Road next weekend yeah. um, let's have a look through the action then and maybe discuss some of the some of the moments of which you're, you're, you've been commentating on this afternoon and some of the moments we've been speaking about just off mic there and yeah. the first half Swansea were quite impressive and no, they weren't as good as we know they can be no they weren't but up until this point they'd had a few sort of moments in the game and I think Ronald was, was there bright spot wasn't he down that right hand side and obviously he's the one who's been the difference in the afternoon we had one or two openings and we spoke about Roos in there where he's doing a lot of good work outside the box you see that opportunity there with his left foot doesn't catch it clean but that's where you want to see him doing his work um, uh, sometimes I said maybe play a two up there you know give him a little bit of help in and around him because he's the one who's coming out he's put two or three good balls into the box and uh, and nobody's getting on the end of him but I think is this the opening goal now yeah, this is the one, isn't it? Yeah, too much space here. I think we're in a good position with 3v2 out on this touchline, really. And I think it's Trey. I'm not sure. Does he need some information from behind him? If we see the build-up again, he's actually in a good position. He goes back. Look at it now. Trey's actually pressing him. And he knows he's got a runner behind him. He's got to get information there. I think Luke's behind him. Can he tell him to go and press the ball a little bit more? Jamie Patson comes across there. Doesn't get anything on it. But he's in the eye line of Hjelda. Just see it there now. And then it's up past Hjelda. And then... Uh, Callum Styles is behind him, 2v1 at the far post. Anthony Patterson does well with the first one down to his left hand side, can't do nothing with the second one. And then Swansea in front and probably shaded the game up to that point and deserved their lead. And they had a couple of moments after. Here's these opportunities now. Um, is that Piquetta? That one, or is it Cullen? Yeah, it's Piquetta, isn't it? Comes across. He's looking for that opening, looking to get half the yard. He gets it eventually, pulls the trigger, and it's a good save from Anthony Patterson. Uh, but you can just see again from the clips what we had in the first half too many half chances at best and again Pierre there he's having to pull the trigger from not 35 40 yards isn't he to try and get a strike away uh, here we go again Ronald's in again lovely ball across and I think Piquetta coming in at the far post he'll be disappointed he hasn't took that away well he is disappointed you can see looking at his reaction there shirt over his head another opportunity for uh, for Swansea and it wasn't too long after they go and get the second again we get caught don't we you know we, we played out all season and then you can see what Luke's looking to do. Looks to just feed it into Dan Neal, but credit to Joe Allen. He's on the front foot, presses really well, steals it off him, clips it out to, to he, Ronald. He looks there. like a good player, doesn't he? He Ronald? does, yeah. Yeah, we'd heard a little bit about him. I hadn't seen him play before today. Gets a little bit of space there. Again, that's the danger when you're playing. You sort of, you, you, your wing backs and you've got your outside centre back has to come narrow. Callum Styles is too far advanced, can't get back in. And it's a decent first touch, to be fair. He cushions it just away from from uh, Kjelder who's trying to get back at him and then his second touch is, a, is an even better one isn't it past Anthony Patterson and then they're in the they're in the driving seat then Swansea and again Trey this one it's there to be hit it's, it's, it's a little uh, deflection into his path sitting up there goes to, to so I think he's looking to try and cut across it into that far corner and slices it wide but there's these too many of these little moments in the game as well we're, we're a young squad but we're naive in, in our defending from set plays at this moment in time where we've got to learn fast because we almost get caught again and think it's Abdullah Bar on that one they take the short corner so immediately you've got to think something's happening here I've got to get switched on track me runner and he doesn't and again it could have been Ranald for the hat trick wasn't it yeah past the past the far post and you can see the lads getting at each other you know they know it's not good enough they don't need 35 40,000 Sunderland fans in the stadium to tell them and you can sense it in here. I've been there as a player. It's not nice, but you've got to get through it. And they're going to 
these lads are going to learn from it, young lads. Um, you know, up against the team as well. You look at the last three games we've had. Huddersfield, who were struggling down the other end of the table. Birmingham, I know that I think they're up to 15th or so now, but they're right down there. And obviously Swansea, all teams that were at the wrong end of the table. And we've taken no points from those those three games, which is the, a massive disappointment. And it looks looks like we're getting to that stage where you know, obviously the playoffs are, are away from us now. Yeah, I'm just looking back through some more of these moments. That was pretty close that from Pierre Equa. I didn't realise at the time because we yeah, didn't dipping. see from this this angle. But it brushes yeah. the top of the net, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, decent strike. Um, again, you can say one or two stepped up a little bit better in the second half, didn't they? We made a few changes, uh, but a lot of half chances. You know, if, you, if you're talking about a game at home when you're trying to dominate against a, a team who are struggling, who are coming off the bat of some, you know, poor results. Uh, you know, admittedly against the, some of the top sides. But how many times has their keeper had to make a, a worldy save this afternoon? He hasn't propped Anthony Patterson late on, wasn't it? With the uh, with the diving header when we're struggling. And there's there's one there. You see how he, he he can't come for that the keeper. He makes a step forward because it's an outswinger from Pierre, and then Luke just gets in, and they've actually switched off themselves. When you yeah. see it, you mentioned it, didn't you? Where they weren't set. Look back post there. I think is it. Uh, yes, it's the left back, isn't it? Timon. Timon yeah. Who gets caught wrong side of Luke 09, and Luke just steals in, and then you think we're back in it now. The crowd were up a little bit. And, and that was the 76th had, minute. I was going to say, we still had yeah. 50 minutes or so to go, didn't we? You know, Mundell's come on, hasn't he? Tried to get involved. Another ball there. Look, we've Another got four bodies those, in yeah. there. Four bodies, no takers. And I'm sure, it's, I'm sure it's something they're working on in training. You know, top end of the pitch, where's our main problems? And when you haven't got Jack Clark, who's, you know, 15 goals to the good this season, he's not out there. Where are the goals going to come from for us now? Um, obviously, it's been a centre-back today from a set play. But in general, open play. We put three or four decent balls in, cutbacks and nobody's there and there's Anthony Patterson you look diving header yeah desperate stage in the game isn't it right at the end of the game and uh, Anthony Patterson your goalkeeper there is trying to trying to rescue a point for us so yeah another disappointing afternoon for us back at home as well in front of a good crowd and that's the main one and obviously for, for Mike Dodds as well he had to come here this afternoon you know stepping up again after those couple of good results he had against West Brom and, and Leeds um, obviously the disappointing one against Bristol City but coming up against Swansea today he would he would have wanted to, to get off the mark so to speak with another good result but it's not to be Yes um, we will look through at the uh, other scores if we can around the championship uh, ok so there was an early kick off Hull City 1 West Brom 1 all full time scores now Blackburn Rovers 1 Norwich City 1 Cardiff City 2 Stoke City 1 Ipswich Three Birmingham City one, Middlesbrough nil, Plymouth Argyle two, Queens Park Rangers two, Rotherham United one, Sheffield Wednesday two, Bristol City one, Southampton one, Millwall two, and Watford one, Huddersfield Town two. Some interesting results there, Danny. Easy ones to pull out. The uh, Millwall result, obviously. Yeah, away at Southampton. Yeah, that's a big one. And obviously Ipswich. I think we're we one all at half time, and they came through that one, didn't yeah. they? So. Yeah, disappointing one for Southampton, isn't it? Um, and Ipswich back on track, top end of the table, yeah. I wonder if we can see what that does to the table and what does Sunderland's uh, performance this afternoon uh, leave them? Uh, it leaves them on 47 points, obviously, but that sixth place now yeah. is getting further away, isn't it? Eight points off it, oh yeah, and obviously, yes. Obviously, time's running out. Still, twelve games to go, isn't it? But yeah, when you when you're off the back of three, and we're looking at it there, we still got to play Leicester, got to play Leeds, Southampton, uh, West Brom. You know, we've got a lot of teams to play above us. You know, you, you'd say on the flip side of that, you want to take points off the teams who are just above you. Um, but you look at that little gap that's opened up as well from ourselves, even to Coventry now as well. Obviously, everybody's played the same amount of games, so it's going to be a difficult task. We've got to get on a run if we are to get back to it. But at this moment in time, confidence is low. How do you get out of that? Obviously, by, by winning games of football. And as you mentioned there, off to Cali Road. Can we go there and get a result? Uh, let's see what some of the supporters have said around the world. We've been broadcasting around the world here on SFC Live this afternoon. David's been in touch and says, what's your thoughts on playing three centre-backs when Ballard is back? Uh, we've attacking full-backs in the squad to play that system. We have done it before. I think, was it was it the Leeds game? Yeah, Leeds, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we did. Yeah, I think that was different that night. I think... Obviously, you know, he was talking about a back three, back five. I think, especially in that second half against Leeds, they penned us in and it was a back five, wasn't it? When you have good possession and you play with the back three, yes, of course, you can get your wing, your wing backs high and wide. And, and as we mentioned before the game, getting balls into the box, it wasn't the case today. Uh, obviously, you've got Callum Styles coming in um, and Trey was out on that right hand side. Um, and obviously, we had to change it. The game wasn't going 
going to plan, obviously. And Mike Dodds changed it, went back to his back four. Um, but yeah, you know, I'd look at it. You obviously have to assess the, the personnel available. I'm not against going to a back three. Obviously, Dan Ballard was missing today and Dan's been a massive player for us. So we need to get him back out there as well. Uh, but you, you know, you had four changes today, so now obviously the fans are going to look at it and think, could we have done this? Hindsight, isn't it? You know, yeah. it always comes into play after a game. Of course, it does. Why is he? Why has he changed that? Maybe, you know, changing it straight away today. Could we have just dropped Jensen Seal straight in there? Um, you know, straight swap for, for Dan Ballard, possibly. But you know, the game's happened now. It's gone. Everybody's going to discuss it. People will be in the pubs now. Why haven't we done this? Why haven't we done that? That's how football goes. But I look forward to it now. Obviously, a big week coming up. Norwich. Um, Leicester and uh, Southampton. Yeah, isn't we've it? got a lot yeah. of the uh, top. Yeah, top so six, there's some tough, tough and, fixtures yeah. coming up. Uh, so we'll have to assess things and, and try and get us back on track. And it's difficult. We've, we've struggled against some of the lesser sides now, so to speak. Now we've got to come up against the big boys and try and dig some results out. Let's have a look at another thought. Then uh, I think this is. We've only got time for this last one from Red and White Haddock. He's been in touch before. Reverting back to our normal formation at half time worked. But do you think Rusin playing off Hamia might be the way forward in the remainder of our games when Clark is missing especially? Now, Danny, you made that point actually did, when yeah. we were walking down the stairs. I think you said, why doesn't why doesn't someone try Hamia and Rusin up top? Yeah, possibly. I, I said it when it was happening. You could see Hamia down below was getting ready. And I thought, are we going to pair him with, uh, with Rusin and leave him on there? Because I think Rusin done a lot of good work today outside the box. You know, we say it about him all the time. He's, he's willing to run the channels. He, he backs into centre-halves, sticks it quite well at times, but he just needs a little bit of help. He actually fizzed two or three good balls across, but nobody's on the end of him. That's where you want him. Now, obviously, if you're, if you're willing to play a strike partner up there for him, not so much the big man, little man, but Hemir or, you know, somebody else, give them a little, maybe a, a runner running the side together. 4-4-2, you know, 4-4-2, whatever you go, 3-5-2, just play them together, maybe change it up, you know, things aren't quite working, I know we changed it today to maybe a 3-4-3 for the half an hour or so, and then we reverted back to how we were previously, um, but yeah, I'd, I'd maybe look at giving it a go, why not try it, you know, we need, we need centre forward scoring goals, again, I've just mentioned it there, where's the goals come, when Jack's not on the side, he's mentioned it, if Jack's not in the team, um, who else is going to get us the goal, well, we've had to rely on a centre half today from a set play in the end, so we've got to start looking at creating more in open play. Rusin's had one or two opportunities, didn't catch him clean. Um, but yeah, something I'd, I'd certainly be willing to uh, willing to have a look at. OK, then I think that might be it for us this afternoon here at the Stadium of Light. Uh, we are next on uh, on Saturday, the 2nd of March, which is next weekend. 3 p.m. kickoff down at Carroll Road. Myself and Danny will be back in the studio for that one. So join us for uh, 2.15 for that. You can get your matchday streaming passes right now at safc.com. You can also check out the Sunland Till I Die clothing range, which is now available at safcstore.com as well now. Until next time, we'll see you soon. <laughs>